thanks for tuning in. So you're wondering about what does it cost to live in Central Ohio? What's in here compared to other areas across the country? Well, you've come to the right place. That is what this video is all about. Williams, the owner of the MCW Home Group um, by XB. I am a local real estate agent here in Columbus, Ohio, and welcome to my Living in Columbus channel about all things related to cost of living, what it's like, the different neighborhoods here, what you need to know before you relocate or decide that Columbus is your home. So if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and hit subscribe so you can get updates on all of those topics. All right, let's dive in. Let's talk about cost of living. A couple of things before we get started, just so you know what I'm talking about. When I'm gonna start talking about percentages and numbers. So think about it, if it's if I say 100, 100 is what the average is across the country. If the number I say is above 100, it means that it's more expensive here in Central Ohio. If the number is below 100, it means it's less expensive when it comes to cost of living. So what are the areas that make up cost of living. We're gonna talk about five. Okay, I'm gonna pull up a map here so you can see. We've talked a little bit about what the numbers mean. I wanna talk about specific areas because I'm gonna be referencing those in the cost of living. Um, you'll see on this map here that there are kind of, pay attention to three colors. The lavender is kind of what I'm going to consider the Columbus metro area when I'm talking about it. The other color is kind of a deep purple, burgundy, not sure how it's showing up on your computer, but those are gonna be when I'm referencing a higher cost of living or the suburbs that have a higher cost of living. There's actually gonna be five of those. So it's gonna be Dublin, it's going to be Pal, it's gonna be New Albany out to the east, it's gonna be Upper Arlington and Bexley, which is right outside the city limits of Columbus. Let's talk overall cost of living for, um, for Columbus, it is 85.5. So what does that mean? It means it's actually about 15% less than the average across the country to live here in Central Ohio, making it in a pretty affordable place. When you look at a bigger picture, Ohio is 82%. So the Columbus area as a whole, all those communities that I showed you on that map is just a couple percentages more expensive than Ohio, but it's still well below the average across the country. But the interesting thing is, um, if you take that, when I take out those higher cost of living, those suburbs, then that cost of living percentage for those communities go up to 118. So it is about 18% more expensive to live in those suburbs. And there's two main areas. The first that, um, there are two main areas that play into that increase of cost of living. One is groceries and the second is the housing. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna talk about the housing last, but let's go ahead and start with the groceries. Now, I looked up the price for milk today, and um, it is kind of crazy with COVID. Groceries all across the nation are a little astronomical with all the supply chain um, issues. But today, for a gallon of milk in Columbus, it was $2.74. National average is $3.28. But then if you go out to those other suburbs, I looked at milk, a gallon of milk, for Dublin and that was four dollars that is um, more than a dollar more than the metro area of Columbus so you can see where that discrepancy is um, groceries are really different depending on where you are in the city and in the suburbs generally speaking 
Columbus is about 1% less than the average when it comes to the cost of groceries. And um, kind of talking about groceries, we have several grocery stores here that serve Central Ohio. The regional chains that um, I think if you're from the Ohio, you're familiar with Kroger, Giant Eagle. We have national chains. We have Myers. We have um, Whole Foods. We have the big box um, warehouse stores, Costco. If you don't know what a Costco is, we have them all around here. One of my favorite stores. Um, we have like Trader Joe's. We have specialty stores as well. I'm coming from an Italian background and there's lots of little Italian markets. Um, in Worthington, they have a little grocery store called The Hills with lots of local brands and specialties. Also kind of talking about food and cost of living. What if you want to go out to eat though? What is the cost of food like um, if you go out to eat for dinner? We are Columbus right at the national average. So what that means, what is the national average is say for a meal of two at a mid, you know, mid price restaurant, nothing extravagant, not a fast food type restaurant or Chipotle or something like that, but just a, a, a normal sit down restaurant. It's going to be about $60 and for two people that does not include drinks, that includes probably an appetizer, two meals, and possibly a dessert. But we're right on target with the um, the national cost when it comes to getting a meal and going out to eat. And believe me, check out some of my other videos where I talk about lots of the local restaurants. There are plenty of places for you to go out to eat. Now, what about if you want to add a movie? onto your night out. What, how much do movie tickets cost here? About, you know, not matinees, but adults, um, I would say about 12 to 14 dollars. So if you have a date night out, I know a lot of people are streaming now more like Netflix, but if you do go out, if you do go to the movies, you would probably be at um, a little under a hundred dollars for a dinner and two movie tickets. Hey, the second thing that goes into that cost of living factor of that 85.5% of what it costs to live here in the Columbus, Ohio area is healthcare. What I found pretty amazing about this, we are actually about 15% below the national average. So we are at an 86.6 and that cost is consistent around the metro area and the suburbs. So you're not going to see a big difference in what it costs um, to go to the doctors, what the healthcare, a hospital stay, going to get a CAT scan between if you get it in Dublin, Ohio, or if you get it at um, Ohio State, down at Ohio State in Columbus. It's going to be consistent throughout. Um, what, I, what I find quite interesting is because we are about 15% below um, the national average, we have some amazing health care. So that is actually kind of a draw. A lot of people that are looking for good health care systems actually are drawn to the Columbus area. Another thing to note, the average monthly premium for healthcare is about $500 per month for the Columbus area. So that again is lower than the national average by about 18% about actually on that statistic. Another category that I'm going to mention a little bit under um, healthcare is childcare because I have a lot of people relocating here that have families and um, asking about childcare costs. Are there a lot of child cares here? And yes, there are a ton. With our schools growing, with everything growing, child care, um, preschool, pre-K is a big industry here in Central Ohio. We have the three-year-olds rooms. We, the preschools are typically broken down into ages when it comes to the rooms. You'll have the three-year-old room. You'll have the young fours, the four and five-year-old rooms. Um, um, one thing I do notice, again, this is something different that I noticed when we relocated here when it comes to kids and preschool and kindergarten, a lot of people um, don't send their kid to kindergarten when they're five. They will, if they're right on that cusp, they will hold them back and send them when they are possibly six. So for example, my son is 12, he's in seventh grade, and he will be 13 in March. He is the youngest, one of the youngest in his class. There are some kids who 
turned 13 at the end of sixth grade. There are some kids that turn 13 over the summer before seventh grade. And the reason for that, when he started kindergarten, we were in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, it was what was the norm there is when they turn five, they are off to kindergarten. Now my little girl, she her birthday was in May and we lived here in um, the Columbus area in Powell when she turned five and when she turned six. And what we decided to do is we said her when she was six. So how does, th that's just an interesting fact. I think um, it's good to know as a parent if you're relocating here. So, one thing when you're uh, when you are thinking about your costs is maybe your kids are going to have an extra year of preschool, and also do know depending on the school district, some kindergartners, some kindergarten classes are not all full day when it comes to different school districts. So Olentangy does not have a full day every day program. They go with three, two days and one um, day every other week. It's kind of a wonky program. Worthington has half day. You can pay to go full day there. But with that said, there are different programs such as kindergarten enrichment. Um, there might be preschool programs for your kindergartner on their off days when they're not actually in kindergarten. So that's something of, a, of importance that I wanted to share. Okay, so the third area that we're going to talk about that contributes to the cost of living rating right here in Ohio is utilities. So we're talking electricity, we're talking gas, um, we're talking internet, we're talking water, we're talking trash. The one thing that's a little interesting out of all of these averages, this one is a little higher than the national average. And when I say a little, I mean a little. It's 1% higher. So we are rated at 101. And again, this is kind of consistent between the metro and the suburbs that I was talking. Pretty consistent throughout. What I would say, the one utility that is driving this price up, I think, for the Columbus area is actually nat natural, excuse me, is actually natural gas. So that one is a little more expensive than the natural average, which in totality does increase our utility score. So let me break down a little bit of what the average, and this is Ohio, because um, we're right in line with Ohio, what the average Ohio electric um, utility bills are going to be. Electric is about $108 a month. Water, you're gonna get a bill for about $71 a month. Gas is about $68 a month, which is higher than the national average. Internet around here, just plain, normal internet is gonna run you about $60 a month. Homes around here actually have a couple different ways. If you're familiar with a geothermal unit to heat their house, um, it gets away from the natural gas. It uses electricity. So you'll see some of the custom builds and some of the homes um, that are on more acreage that are being built with these geothermal units. It's just a little bit of an interesting fact. And I think some of that does, in fact, um, get driven by the high natural gas costs, costs here in central Ohio. Another thing when we're looking at homes specific, um, it's not a utility cost, but it has to do with utilities. We have lots of wind here that sometimes knocks out our electricity. So um, you will see a lot of houses being actually built with backup generators, um, which I find interesting. When we lived all across the other country, when we lived across the country and all the other different states that my husband and I had lived in, we I never saw houses that had so many houses that had generators um, when they were built or installed. So I find that an interesting fact. It doesn't go into the cost of utilities, but it kind of talks about a little bit about the spottiness of our electric service here in Columbus. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the fourth thing when it comes to the cost of living, and that category is transportation. So when we look at transportation and the Columbus area, it is a very... Um, heavy percentage uses cars to get around. It is a very car dependent city. So um, things obviously have changed due to COVID as how many people are going into work, how many people are actually commuting, how many people are working from home. But kind of 
Big averages, about 80% of the population um, uses a car, about 8% carpool, and then less than 3% use our mass transit here, which is um, CODA. We have um, a busing system. We don't really have any train systems or anything along those lines. So when we look at all of that, what is the cost of transportation? Where do we stand? And we are at the number 90. So we're about 10% less than the national average. And I am going to be speaking um, regarding when I'm talking through this more as it relates to what it costs to owning a car here. So I think the first thing is going to be gas. That is such an important factor because that is a reoccurring factor every week that you are going to be paying. I looked up the gas prices today and the national, let me check, yes, the national average is $3.28. Then when I checked Ohio, the national, the average for that today was $3.02. And when I narrowed that down even further, I did the Columbus area and that was $2.99. So you can see that we are, um, you know, pretty much under the national average when it also comes to gas also looked at kind of two different cities um, that a lot of people are relocating here, Chicago and New York, and we are about nearly a dollar less than it is to get gas in Chicago and about 50 cents less than in New York. The one interesting thing and it's something to keep in mind if you are reloading here, we, my family and I, my husband and I learned this. There's lots of different costs, costs associated to different types of insurance, um, be it going from state to state, city to city. So we're talking house insurance, we're talking car insurance. Um, since we're in the transportation category, I want to touch a little bit on car insurance, which is really good here. We are 27% under the national average it means monetarily for you annually it's a little over a thousand dollars annually and that was a benefit to us when we lived out in Utah the um, auto insurance rates were astronomical as they were in Chicago when we lived downtown Chicago so um, that is a little place where we get a little breather um, is the auto insurance Okay, now coming in and finishing up this topic and what a lot of you are here for and it's going to be the majority of your percentage when it comes to cost of living of where your money is going to go for most of us is housing. And this one also is a bit tricky because there is a big discrepancy in cost of living and what it costs when you're looking at different areas in the Columbus area. So let me give you a couple facts. So in Columbus as a whole, it is, the number is 68. So it is well below the national average when it comes to housing. And what do you mean by housing? I mean, if you're renting, I mean your mortgage payments, how much does it cost to actually purchase a house? What houses are going for? Talking about home insurance, all of those things are going to fall under the housing category. So 68 is the number of Columbus. I'm gonna pull that map back up with the purples and I want you to take a look. So that 60% is everything combined. Now look at that dark purple again, those suburbs. We've got Powell, we've got um, Dublin, we've got New Albany, we've got Bexley, we've got Upper Arlington. And what that is, is 172. So big difference, 68 to 172. That's kind of hard to wrap your um, mind around. So I'm gonna give it to you, I think, in a way that you can relate a little more when we're talking about median, medium, median, <laughs> excuse me, median home prices. So that 68%, the median, not the average, the median is about $210,000 for a single family home. Now, when we're looking at that 172, the median, is about 469000 for a single family home. So there's a big, big discrepancy. Other things that are playing into those numbers um, have to do with taxes. And if you want to hear more about it, I don't want to go over it all in here, but go ahead and check out my other video 
that talks about the pros and cons of living in Columbus. And I have a section on there of taxes, specifically property taxes as it relates to um, school taxes and why there is a discrepancy. And that's really driving that um, housing cost of living up. Okay, guys, so that wraps it up um, regarding cost of living. And just kind of to sum it up, like it is a pretty affordable place to live, but there are some things that really makes a difference on your affordability when it comes to living here in Central Ohio. That 85% um, is the average of the Columbus area. It is pretty affordable, but if you do choose, in fact, to live in one of those suburbs, your cost of living is going to go up to a number of 117, so slightly above the national average. So I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, please put them below. I will answer them. And again, I'm Mary Chris Williams, the owner of the MCW Home Group by XP Realty. And if you're looking to relocate here, want help finding houses, want to know a little bit more about the cities, reach out. Here is my email, way to get in contact. You can text me, you can send me um, an email, you can give me a call, whichever way you prefer. So if you or anyone you know is looking for someone, let me know. I would love to help them make Central Ohio their home. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and like this video. Thanks all.